His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a phone conversation with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Majesty the King strongly condemned yesterday's heinous attack against the Emergency Forces Mosque in Asir. His Majesty King Hamad offered deepest condolences and sympathy to King Salman, praying to Allah Almighty to rest the souls of the martyrs of duty in eternal peace and bless the wounded with speedy recovery. The custodian of the two holy mosques expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his noble fraternal feelings, which Wishing him abundant good health and happiness and to the Kingdom of Bahrain more progress and prosperity. Messages of support for Bahrain and condemnation of interference by Iran have been pouring in from friendly nations and Bahraini citizens. But what is life really like for the so-called oppressed people of Bahrain? This report puts the record straight. Days after six world powers in Iran reached a deal on curbing Tehran's nuclear activities in exchange for sanctions relief, Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei used his Eid al-Fitr speech on July the 18th to express support for the so-called oppressed people of Bahrain. Just two months earlier, on May the 16th, he made the same pledge. So let's explore the conditions suffered by the oppressed people of Bahrain, starting with the basic human need for accommodation. For the past 50 years, Bahraini nationals have benefited from the services provided by the Ministry of Housing, including houses and over 3 billion dinars worth of loans. We provide six services to the citizens of Bahrain. We provide um, a house, flats, loans, three kind of loans, and people have the, um, uh, the choice to choose what kind of services they want from the government. Additionally, in May of this year, the Housing Ministry allocated 34 million dinars in the form of loans for needy Bahraini families to renovate their dilapidated houses. The 2015 Millennium Development Goals provide an international measure of a country's performance against key targets. Bahrain had a head start in many categories, being the first country in the region to introduce public education, with the establishment of the first boys' public school in 1919. Bahrain's long history of female empowerment and equality can be traced back to 1926 with the establishment of the first public girls' school. In 2015, nearly a century later, Bahrain reported a primary education rate of 98.6% and a 98.2% literacy among 15 to 24-year-olds. Since 1999, the Crown Prince's International Scholarship Programme has been enabling the brightest Bahraini youngsters to maximise their potential to study at top educational establishments around the world. These dedicated and motivated students have the freedom to select their own field of study and don't have to return to Bahrain after graduation or work for a particular organisation. Women form a traditionally oppressed sector of many nations. But in Bahrain, women's rights are safeguarded by the brainchild of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the National Action Charter. The charter, which was endorsed by 98.4% of voters in a nationwide referendum, states that all citizens are equal before the law in terms of rights and duties without discrimination. Furthermore, the Supreme Council for Women, established in 2001, promotes the status of women and better awareness of their capabilities and ensures that their rights are protected. Today, women make up nearly half the public sector workforce and over 30% in the private sector. Women are also represented in the political arena. Bahraini women were the first in the GCC to participate in the national elections, both in the voting booth and as candidates, and the country was the first to elect a female MP. Bahraini women hold portfolios in the cabinet, head up multi-million dollar organisations. Indeed, the Forbes list of the 200 most powerful Arab women included 15 Bahrainis. And talking of the political arena, surely oppressed people have little or no say in the way they are governed. Again, thanks to the National Action Charter, Bahrain holds free and fair elections for the 40 members of the Council of Representatives, which now has the authority to approve or reject the government's action plan. The right to vote for the municipal councils and to have a say in the services they receive as residents is even extended to expatriates who own property in the kingdom. According to the dictionary, oppressed people have no freedom. One of Bahrain's exceptional qualities is the tolerance and freedom for all residents to practice their religious faith. Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus and Buddhists have lived together in harmony for hundreds of years in a spirit of neighbourliness. To entire world, 
from our community, which has been settled in Bahrain since centuries, is peace, love, and affection. We want to propagate that uh, Bahrain model of uh, 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 coexistence should be the uh, should be uh, their model to all over the world. Walk around one of Bahrain's shopping malls and you'll see a wide range of nationalities and styles of dress. From Muslim ladies enjoying the freedom to be fully covered from head to toe, a tradition banned in some countries, to others adopting more Western styles of dress, also restricted in some countries. And Bahrain's women are encouraged not only to spectate at football and volleyball matches, but to take part themselves in sports activities. In fact, Bahrain's women athletes have achieved considerable success in bowling, shooting and equestrian competitions. Despite attempts to undermine Bahrain's image, throughout its long history, Bahrain has been a regional role model of political and democratic reform, religious tolerance, coexistence and economic diversification, and has been named as one of the best places to live in the Middle East by a worldwide survey of expatriates. This is Esther Galoom for Bahrain Television.